What is going on, Mentees? The Uncanny Omar here from Near Mint Condition. And today, I'm going to do an overview of all four of the volumes of Harrow County Library Editions from Dark Horse. So, please stay tuned. Okay, so let's take a look at each one of these really quick. Uh, they all have their own dust jacket, and let's do a little size comparison first. So, here's Harrow County Volume 1 compared to the size of Hellboy uh, Library Edition. You can tell it's taller but Hellboy is longer. Here it is compared to the size of a Marvel Omnibus, which is identical to the size of a DC Omnibus, and then to the size of a standard size trade paperback. So you can tell how much bigger the dimensions are on these books. So they are oversized. Uh, each one is $39.99. That's the retail price of these. But if you click in the description, uh, there's a link for 50, I think volume one, this one here is more than 50% off, just so you can give it a shot. Here's the back of each one of them and what the spines of each one of these books look like. Everything is identical other than of course the volume number. And then each one of them say library edition in a different color up at the top. As I've mentioned, each one of these come with a dust jacket. So there is artwork under the dust jacket. Uh, now, as I talk just a little bit about each one of these, I'm not going to give any spoilers away. Uh, but this is volume one. I've done an overview of the third volume when it came out. But this is it. This is all 32 issues, including all the tells of Harrow County stories. So it is very quickly the story of Hester Beck, this witch right here, that was killed by Harrow County villagers 18 years ago. So she's dead. Uh, I love each each one of the issues has an introduction of Harrow County. The words are up, hidden or in your face, kind of like that. And then this is Emmy. Emmy, some villagers think, is the reincarnation of Hester Beck. So the witch. And that is pretty much what the premise of the story is. But it's so much more than that. Um, now, let's look at volume two really quick. Volume one, uh, by the way, each volume has, let's look, uh, all the mini tales of Harrow County in the back, as well as a sketchbook. Actually, volume one has a bunch of variant covers because issue one had a bunch of variants. And let's just quickly glance through those. So, yeah, this are all the variants from volume one. Here's all the tales of Harrow County. And then in the back, each ish, each volume has a tale of Harrow County. They're all one little pagers. Uh, some interviews with the creators, and I'll talk about the creators when I look at volume two of this. And then some of the story drafts here in the back. Volume one collected issues one through eight. And like I said, all the tales of pages. And then volume two collects issues nine through 16 and the tells of, and then we're introduced to more characters such as Bernice or the character in the cover, the skinless boy. Bernice is one of Emmy's friends and they kind of are a little bit at odds with each other because Bernice kind of knows that, or she seems to think like everyone else does in this county, that Emmy is the reincarnation of Hester. However, Bernice still wants to be her friend. One thing I haven't talked about yet are these wonderful ribbons that each volume has in them. So they're all, each of the volumes have a black ribbon. Again, much like volume one, there's extras in the back, like sketches of the covers. Uh, I think there's script in this one. No, this one has the painting process. And some of the script along with the thumbnails here. There's a whole issue actually of that. And then the tales of Harrow County all the way in the back. Now, here is volume three. Again, dust jacket, and then inside of the dust jacket. They have this, uh, I love the feel of this backboard here that they use, by the way. And it's the same feel as the goon. I don't know if you all have those or not. Each one of the books, by the way, has an introduction by comic book creator, Chris, Schweizer. And speaking of comic book creators, one thing I haven't talked about is who 
are the creators of these books? Well, it is Colin Bunn, who has written a lot of stuff, a lot of independent stuff. Uh, I've done some reviews of his stuff on the channel. Um, I know for Marvel, he's done X-Men and he's done Magneto. Uh, he's had a run on Doctor Strange, I believe. But to me, man, this has to be his magnum opus uh, because it is wonderful. And to add to the creepiness of the story is this wonderful artist right here. And that's Tyler Crook. He has these watercolors added to the book that are just... He adds these watercolor paintings to each panel that are just absolutely stunning and creepy. Uh, so I mentioned witches, but the overall story also has goblins. It has reincarnation. Um, it has demons. It has cannibalism. And it's all about Emmy and how she's coming to terms with who she is. Now, And there's a lot of twists and turns that I really enjoyed that I didn't see coming. So let's go back and look at the extras in this volume here. And this particular volume, volume three, contains issues 7, 13 through 24. Here's the painting process by Tyler Crook. So each cover is collected in here. And like I said, it's absolutely gorgeous. It's like a creepy kid's book. And here's the bestiary. So we have the skinless boy tells you who he is, uh, the tattered skin, the woodland ghost, uh, goblins that I mentioned, and then the tales of Harrow County in the back. Most of these, by the way, are written by Tyler Crook or Colin Bunn. There's a couple like uh, Chris Schweizer that he wrote a few, but they're all little one pagers. And then these little excerpts of this book, The Devil's Hoof Prints of Harrow County. Here's an awesome uh hellboy crossover although i don't think it really did happen with harrow county and then ideas for the covers and then just like quick sketches for the covers moving on to the final volume volume four which i'll talk about really briefly because i don't want to give anything away um like I mentioned, a bunch of horror elements, a bunch of sci-fi elements, and just a bunch of realism thrown in here. I really think, to me, this is my favorite thing that I've ever read from Colin Bunn. Um, I read these, uh, I read volume one when it came out, I read volumes one, two, and three when I got volume three, and then I just reread them again. Uh, they're a quick read, and they are quite wonderful and amazing. And, you know, it's one of those things that I feared that, oh, the ending is... It has to live up to the series. So for me, it stayed at a 5 out of 5 the entire time. And I'm like, but the ending could suck. It still has a chance of sucking. But it didn't. It stayed just as good as the entire series. And I'm so happy to say that it is a 5 out of 5 the whole way through. It was such a great ride. Um, that's all I'm going to flip through here. I'm going to go through the back. There's just a couple of sketches. And then... Um, some pinup art. One thing I will say is keep an eye on the books though because they seem to go in and out of print. And and I don't really mean out of print. I mean out of stock. Like same thing happened with Library Edition Volume 1 and 2. They went out of stock so quick. Volume 4 right now is out of stock. Um, I don't think the Amazon orders have fulfilled yet. So that's where I've linked the description to Volume 1 by the way. Uh, but I think you could still get Volume 4 from there. Uh, or check, check, I know that IST doesn't have it. I don't know about CheapGraphicNovels.com or, of course, your local comic book stores. And the book literally just came out, like, two weeks ago. Uh, there's the goodbye letters from both Crook and Bun. And then how else you can collect these. Because you can also collect these in trade paperback format. As far as the build of the books, it's wonderful. Sewn binding. And the spine is intact. It's exactly what you want. One of the things I need to point out, though, is the thickness of this glossy paper. I love how thick these are. Like, it doesn't seem brittle or fragile. I mean, it seems like you are definitely getting more than what you paid for. And I love this type of paper on books and collections like this. I've read these at least volume one has been read three times and it's still just intact and not breaking apart or anything so for the price of forty dollars for as much as you get in each one of these or and that's retail as well these are completely worth it
And that was it. That was the content of each one of these four wonderful, amazing books. Let me know in the comments down below if you've picked them up, if you have the trade paperbacks and you've been on the fence about upgrading those to these library editions. I hope I was able to talk some of you into at least trying it out. Like I mentioned in the link in the description, um, Harrow County's volume one is way over 50% off. So, you know, at least give that one a shot. And if it's not for you, it's not for you. Don't forget to hit that like, subscribe button and hit the notifications button to let you know when our videos go up live. Uh, don't forget to join us for our live videos at 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time every Tuesday evening. It's Old Reader, New Reader. And next week, Maddie, Wonder Maddie, is joined by Tina from our Near Me Condition group. So make sure to check that out. Check us out on our Redbubble page and our Patreon. The description will have all those links. And remember, if it's classy and cool, it must be near mint.